I'm excited to welcome on one of the top guys in this 2021 class, and obviously DePaul commit Keon Edward. What's happening, my guy? What's good, bro? What's good? Not much, man. Well, I mean, we obviously know that you made a big move now during this quarantine time. You're obviously transferring now out to Legacy. I mean, what went into this decision? Uh, I just felt like it was the right decision. Like, we had to kind of go away from Hillcrest because things that were going on with my family and stuff like that. And I'm going to be out of Legacy by myself, so – I just like, checked out the situation. I have seen the guys going in. I just felt like it would be a good situation for me to get better. I mean, when we talk about legacy, I mean, it's not necessarily a school you think about on top of your head, like an IMG, a Mont Verde, a, even a degree Hillcrest or something. But you look at the roster, obviously, the U, Bryce, Ike. I mean, the list goes on with Perry, Decoy. I mean, all these guys coming in. How excited are you going to get in there and be able to see what you guys can accomplish? I'm excited to get to work with those guys. Like they say, iron sharp, sharpens iron. We got, like, a nice roster. So when we go in at in practice every day, we're going to push each other and make each other better. And you're obviously going to be transitioning now. I mean, Hillcrest was pretty much a national schedule, always on the road throughout the whole year. Is this going to be more of a situation where you're probably going to be more in state as opposed to on the road? Probably more in state, but we're still going to have those tournaments where we do travel. For sure. And you talk about some of these guys. I mean, when you get out there, once this is all done – I mean, how are you going to kind of get the bond with all those guys? Um, it just takes time. And with this group, I feel like we're already kind of, like, close because I've known some of those guys for a while now, even though that we're just now starting to go to school together. I've known them, like, before this. Because, like, me and Ike, we were on the same team at CP3 in the eighth grade. Mm. So, yeah, I've known all these dudes for, like, a long time. And I just feel like we're, we'll have that chemistry somewhat, and it'll just start to grow as we just, like, get closer with each other on and off the court. And we talk about those guys. I mean, a lot of you guys are 2021 guys that's already commit. There's not a lot of 2021 guys committed, but you obviously going to DePaul. We know that Bryce going to Florida State. Ice going to Maryland now. I mean, you guys, a lot of you guys have the common goal already set. That you guys know you guys are going to college. You guys are focused on the season. What's that going to be like? We, we're focused on the season. Like, we've already made our decision. We wrapped up our recruitment process. We're focused on not losing a game. And so you talk about your high school career so far. I mean, you've had quite a few different transfers. You always start all the way back in Texas. Your first freshman season, a little bit of sophomore, getting adjusted to that. What was it kind of like getting into the high school field? Uh, it, it was different. It was different because, like, when you go prep, everybody can play. And it's just like yeah. the, the practice environment kind of makes – is as tough as everything else. But when you're at, like, a regular school, you're maybe not getting as much from practice. But the games are a little more difficult in the sense that everybody's hitting you with, like – Boxing ones yeah. and doubles and things like that. And you obviously have gone to a few different prep school or national schedule kind of things. And I sometimes a lot more popular for guys because, like you said, it can push you on a day to day basis. You play national schedule. I mean, for you, if you're a top recruit or a guy that just wants to play the next level, is playing prep school, at least national schedule, the best option for you? Uh, I feel like it's case to case. It's case to case. It depends on the person because some people it is the right move, but some people it isn't the right move. For me, I felt like it was because I felt like I needed a situation in which I could focus solely on basketball and, like, academics at the same time, but, like, get my work in throughout the day. Because, like, at Hillcrest, we did online school, and that kind of helped me be able to schedule my day in a way where I could get as much work in as I needed without being at school for eight hours a day. And I could kind of work throughout the day, whether, like, instead of just – having most of my day consumed with being like a classic regular school. Mm -hmm. And you made the transition over to Finley Prep midseason. And at the time, obviously, that was a powerhouse, one of the best high school programs they've been. What was that transition like? Why did you choose Finley Prep? That was really different for me. Like when I first went to Finley, I don't think I was ready. Like personally, at the time, I wasn't. But it was definitely – I helped me with like a lot of growth and stuff like that. And I made that decision because, like I said, when you're playing at a – Public, public school, you're going to get all the double teams and boxing ones and stuff like that. I just felt like I wasn't growing as much as I could be. Because, like, yeah, the end goal is just to be in the NBA and have a successful career. And, like, as, all, at the end of the day, it's all about growth for me and just getting as much growth out of a season and stuff as I possibly can. So I felt like I would grow more at a situation like Finley, and that's why I made the move. And we know at this point, Finley Press no longer a program. When you went out there, was that – did you kind of have a feeling that, that was going to come to an end, that that was going to happen? Uh, not really. I didn't, actually, because when we went out there, everything seemed kind of 
everything seemed in order. Everything seemed straight. Like it, like everybody was kind of surprised by the them not continuing the program after that year. Because I remember everybody got the text that day, and we were like just confused. Like we were like, is this real? Like we didn't know what was going on. So everybody was kind of shocked because we thought it'd be around for years to come. And someone else on that team was Mike Dior Johnson, along with a lot of other guys. Was the original plan for you to stay, obviously, for at least for your next season, the junior season, and possibly the rest of your high school career? Definitely, definitely. That was the original plan because we had a strong core and we had guys coming back. Because, like, there were, we, had, we had a lot of guys. We had a lot of young talent at the time, too. Because, like, people like Alex, Chiku, and uh, Zach, Zach Clements, that's at Sunrise now, we were all at Finley. So we had a bunch of young guys with a lot of talent that were like progressing fast. So we would we would definitely have a strong team if it had stayed together. And Dior, like he hadn't played with us, but he joined like later on in the season, like when we were basically already done. But we would have a strong team if it had stayed together. And so you get that text message, and I believe it was kind of middle of the summer almost, or right around after the season. What what's going through your mind? How do you kind of decide that you have to kind of open up your movement now? And how do you kind of ultimately decide to land at Hillcrest? Uh, it just, I, I just kind of had the mentality, like, I got to find what's next as quickly as possible because, like, because, yeah, I couldn't dwell on it because, I mean, there was nothing I could really do about it. So I kind of just had to move on. So, like, yeah, I just, I, I looked at a bunch of other schools and when I visited Hillcrest, I just liked what they were doing over there as far as, like, them bringing in a bunch of other guys and stuff like that. That's, like, really big to me, having a lot of, other high level guys alongside of you because ultimately you're playing a lot of games this season, but majority of the time you're going to be in practice and that's when you got to really get better. Absolutely. And we know how prep schools obviously work. I mean, they recruit when a school like Finley prep breaks up and all your, all this talent pretty much free agents, if you want to call it, I'm sure you had a ton of the schools you were talking to. I mean, what were some of the options were you considering? Uh, I looked at a lot of schools on the West coast. Like I, I don't know how seriously I consider some of them, but I just looked at a bunch of them. Like, I visited, like, um, visited Modern Day. I visited one time and then uh, visited Rancho. Like, I visited a lot of schools just to see how the fit would be. And, like, I looked at a bunch of possible schools and public schools and stuff like that back in Texas, considered going back to public school. I considered, like, every option, really. I just wanted to see what would be the best fit for me. And so you obviously ultimately land in Arizona, a team that has a massive offseason. I mean, Dale and Terry, Dre are some of the surrounding pieces that stay from the team. You had Mike Foster, Chiante. I mean, the list goes on with guys, Puff. What's, what's it like building your chemistry and trying to get all these guys in all at once? Uh, with us last year, I felt like we, we, we struggled a little bit to trying to, to build that chemistry because we were all so strong individually. Mm-hmm. It was kind of hard to build that chemistry. It's, sometimes it felt like we were all playing like – individual basketball like yeah we're trying to get our own and it was just kind of hard to come together as a team but at a certain point in the season I feel like we definitely did mm-hmm. at, at like around that time we won the chick and John Wall I feel like that's when we came together best as a team like we actually f- figured out how to like use each other instead of just making it like and trying to do it all yourself and that's something I think it's always experience sometimes where it works sometimes and sometimes it doesn't always pan out and for you guys, I mean, putting a lot of star talent, a lot of guys that can score the ball pretty much well, how was it kind of accepting different roles throughout the year? Uh, it was different. It was different. But, like, I just kind of kept in my head the mindset, of like, if I'm not scoring today, how can I affect the game? Like, okay, I might have to go out there and get eight rebounds and seven assists instead of 20 points. I just had to figure out a way to affect the game. And I kind of embraced that new role. I just did as best with it as I could. And we know that one of the parts that probably was one of the hardest parts of the season was hoop ball in Arizona. A couple of events in the beginning of the year when you guys were trying to get chemistry. How did you guys kind of stick together as a team and kind of pick you guys back up following all those losses? Uh, we were at a low point after some of those losses because we really didn't expect – we didn't expect the season to go like that because we, we were like, what's wrong? We have all this talent. Like, we don't get what's going on. And then so we were at, like, a low point after that. But we picked ourselves up, dusted ourselves off. And then we just came together after that. Like, we really started taking practice more seriously after that because we kind of thought it'd just be given to win when we had as many guys as we had. But, like, after that, we really started, like, embracing the work of it and started getting better. When you talk about that turnaround, hoop ball, or after that stuff, you obviously go out, win John Wall, win Chick-fil-A, and 
there was a lot of roster shifting as well. Whole new coaching staff pretty much came in. Or a lot of them are still from the program already, but Coach Bibby obviously his staff leaves. So the Rock obviously goes to Compass. Then Taz and the guys come in. Kind of a lot of shifting right there. My current maker. How do you guys get the chemistry then settled once you have new coaching staff and roster changes midseason? We just kind of did as best as we could with credit to McCurry. That I, we kind of didn't know how he would fit in. Like uh, us as a, I like the players. We didn't know how that would work. But McCurry, he fit right in. Like the way he played, just kind of blended well with everybody else. I, I didn't think we had too much of an issue with him playing. Like he just kind of fit us, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we just did as best as we could with everything else because we knew we had no control over it. I know from the outside media people write stories because they're not in the locker room, but in terms of Coach Bibby and just your bond personally with him, you with him in practice, I mean, what was that like? Coach Bibby was a cool cool guy, always trying to drop knowledge, let us know something that – because he's been where we were all trying to go, and so he's always trying to tell us how it is and things we need to know and, like, information that's going to help us get to the next level. And you guys go out there and you have a big time play. I think it was in John Wall game where you obviously probably have one of your favorite moments of the season, a highlight posterized dunk. You're going down the court, you're ready to throw that, throw that dunk down. What was going through your mind? How'd you pull that off? Man, that was a crazy moment because no, there's nothing like that John Wall crowd. That John Wall crowd was probably the craziest we played in front of all season because, like, the fans were just going nuts after every, like, play. And it was just crazy because, like, you could barely hear anything at the gym at that moment. And I really, I just kind of – that was I, – I was, like, surprised by the crowd more than anything, but I wasn't too shocked about the dunk because, like, I know myself and I'm capable of things like that, so I wasn't too shocked. Absolutely. And obviously, it comes end of the season, you decide to make the transfer we talked about. What went that decision, though? I mean, why did you ultimately decide that it was time to move on from Hillcrest and not pursue your next option? Like I said, there was, we had some family stuff going on, so I just felt like it was the best decision for me and my family. So, yeah, that's what I decided to do because, oh, yeah, it's all about family at the end of the day. And you go out there, and as we talked about, you kind of had to accept a role or degree most of the season with Hillcrest. And this opportunity where you're going to go in for sure be a locked-in starter, a guy that probably want to go to scoring options, what do you want to prove this year now? I just want to prove – I'm trying to prove things to myself. I'm trying to prove that I'm the type of player that can just help a team win. That like I can come in and help a team win. Like I can just like succeed in any role, basically. Because I know, yeah, I know myself, and I know that I can I can just bring winning qualities to any team, basically. That's what I'm saying. And in terms of being a player, you just want to try not to pan out to be. I mean, I know we've talked about some, but. Who's the guy you personally really like to model game after you see yourself panning out? Uh, definitely, like, somebody like Paul George or somebody like that because I kind of haven't added any weight to my body frame yet. So I definitely feel like there's still a lot of growth for me in my game. And you obviously – we know Paul George is he's an elite two-way player. And that's something I know you prioritize. You can score. You can do three. You can do pretty much score all three levels as well as playing defense at a high level. Where do you kind of learn to embrace that defensive role? Uh, it's just kind of ego, man. Ego, just that fire inside you. Like, I don't want to let this guy score on me. Just because, yeah, it's that competitive nature, basically. Yeah, just basically, yeah, that's it, really. And we know you come in last year as a guy that was on the verge of pretty much being a five-star. And for a lot of people that truly watch the game, we know what you can be. And some people obviously decided to drop you down a little bit. So rankings don't obviously mean that much overall. But for you, you have prove people wrong, get your ranking back up there. Where do you so see yourself in the 2021 class ranking-wise? Ranking-wise, I, I see myself top 10, of course. But, that, yeah, like, I don't really pay too much attention to rankings anyway, though, because, yeah, I don't need a number to tell me how good I am because I know I'm putting work in every day. But, yeah, I, I'm going to work to try to climb back up. But at the end of the day, I'm, as long as I prove to myself that I, you know, I do what I feel, do what I feel is necessary, and I'm going to be happy with that. No doubt. And obviously, we know you're already committed. We talked about DePaul. You commit there pretty early. What went that decision? Why did you know DePaul was the right school at that time? Uh, it just was the feel. It was the feel. When I was on campus and I was around their guys and their coaches, it just felt like I had known all of them for way longer than I did. And then they just can constantly show love and always in contact with me. Like, even now, like, I talk to Coach Lido, like, every – 
week or so, he FaceTimes me and we just kind of have a little conversation about life and things like that. So I, it's just a real personal feel and I like that. Cause it, 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 well, yeah, that's what I just needed a school that I felt like wanting to invest in me and like wanted to, and I felt like, and then, like I said, it's all about growth for me. I feel like that that's the spot where I'll be able to grow. And we know your ultimate decision, your ultimate thing you want as well is to make the NBA after that. What's kind of your idea of goal? I mean, do you want to be a one and done player? What do you kind of see as the right timing for you that you want goal wise to make the NBA? Of course, every of course I want to be a one and done, but after the first year of college, we'll kind of we'll see how it can get tested, gauge it, see how what the temperature is. But yeah, that's of course the goal. And we know we already have another guy, top one hundred guy in a mod buying them. What, has your has your guys bond grown that much anymore? Yeah, we talk. We talk occasionally, just text and keep it casual. But we, I, I don't see him much because he's like stays far from me and stuff like that. But yeah, well, yeah, our bond would have definitely grown if we had this EYBL season too. <laughs> but yeah, things, a lot of stuff going on right now in the world. And when you talk about your class, I mean, DePaul's a rising program. It's got a lot of flair right now. A lot of people are starting to look at them as a legit place to possibly go. What's some? Are you kind of looking at that? Other guys, some other guys, you guys kind of targeting that you would want to bring in to that twenty twenty one class? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I always try to recruit my guy, uh, Jalen Blake's. Always trying to recruit him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my guy. We got real close. Uh, met him, met him at USA. Then we got close after that. We text more and stuff like that. But yeah, if I want a point guard, I think that's my guy to go to. <laughs> Absolutely, man. My last one before I let you go is. Ultimately, at the end of the day, what do you want your legacy to be by the time you step away from the game of basketball? Uh, I just want my impact to be greater than sports because you see people like LeBron and the guys like that that are making impacts outside of sports. And I just want to do something like that, make an impact that stays for generations and not just now. No doubt, man. Well, I definitely appreciate you taking time to come on, my guy, and can't wait to see you next season. For sure, for sure. Appreciate you. All right, no, no problem. I'll talk to you later, bro. God bless. Uh -huh. You too.